Level Loop Adjustments. Okay, to start adjusting our level loop, let's take a look at our benchmark. The point name is on the left in the station column, and the corresponding vertical value is in the elevation column on the right. So from our start point, what happened next? Starting at the project benchmark, we turned through each control point until we looped our way all the way back to the project benchmark, or PBM. Notice that we ended with an elevation of 812.228, whereas we started with an elevation of 812.216. That's a total error of positive 0.012. I like to differentiate whether the error is positive or negative. That way we know if we ended high or low in comparison to the original elevation. Let's go ahead and figure out what our adjustment factor will be. The adjustment factor is made up of our error multiplied by negative 1 for a change sign, divided by the total number of stations run through in the level loop. Let's see how many there were. Okay, of course we're not counting the PBM, that's where we started. That elevation is being held. But we've got our first station at 201, second, third, fourth, 204 is repeated. So there's the fourth from the previous page, fifth, and sixth. So that's a total of six stations to make our way back to the PBM. So let's see what that actual math would look like. Now we've got our negative 0.012, that's after multiplying by the negative 1, divided by 6 stations. So our adjustment factor is negative 0.002. The reason that we change signs is we ended our level loop higher than the original benchmark. So any adjustments we make will need to go in the opposite direction. Whether we ended low or ended high, multiplying by negative 1 will always take our adjustment in the opposite direction. So the formula stands whether you've closed your level loop higher or lower than your original benchmark. So we've got our adjustment factor. We know that we're going to be adjusting down negative 12 thousandths over the course of six stations. Let's go ahead and create a couple more columns where we can perform our math. Now I'm calling this first column adjustment factor just to prove a point, but we are going to change this in a minute. Okay, and then we've got our adjusted elevation. I'm going to create the columns on the next sheet as well. Adjustment factor and adjusted elevation. Okay, going back to the first sheet and the first station, we're going to go ahead and subtract 0.002, giving us an adjusted elevation at point 201 of 813.059. Of course, that's the unadjusted 813.061 minus 0.002. Is it as simple as subtracting the adjustment factor of negative 0.002 from every point? Well, let's think about that. If at the beginning we're off only two thousandths, but by the time we get to the end, we're off 12 thousandths, that error will have to have grown along the way. Because if we subtract 2 thousandths from 12 thousandths, we'll still have an error of 10 thousandths at the end of the loop. So what needs to happen here? I told you we were going to change the name of our adjustment factor column. Of course, we don't erase from our field notes. In this case, let's pretend like we had never named this column in the first place and figure out what a more appropriate name would have been. To do so, we're going to need to visualize the math that will take place to get us to the right adjustment when we close our level loop at the PBM. Along with understanding our adjustment factor, we're going to need to understand what our total adjustment will be for each point. That would be our adjustment factor times the current station. Our adjustment factor was negative 002 and we've got six stations. All right, that never happened. Total adjustment column instead of adjustment factor is going to suit our needs so much better. You'll see why in a moment. And of course we don't have to change our first adjustment at 201 because that would be the adjustment factor times 1. At the second station, 202, it'll be the adjustment factor times 2. For a total of negative 0.004, let's run that math. Our adjusted elevation is 813.251. Let's move on to the third station, 203. That'll be our adjustment factor times three, that's negative 0.006, for a final adjusted elevation of 813.175. And you'll notice that the total adjustment is growing, so we're on the right track. Our fourth station will give us a total adjustment of negative 0.008. Before I move on, I'm going to put a strike through on the unadjusted elevations, so that when someone goes back and looks at my notes, it's very clear what the elevation is for each listed point. They show up linearly across from the station name, as always. And really at this point, there's only one value left that doesn't contain a strike through. This is our final adjusted value, and we want to make that clear to anyone looking at our notes. 
Since we're running on to the next page, we're going to take that adjusted elevation at 204 of 813.393 and copy it into the adjusted elevation column on the next page. I'll bring the strike throw over and the total adjustment as well. Moving on to our fifth station, total adjustment of negative 0.010, adjusted elevation of 813.066, and then at our sixth station, or the closure to the PBM, we've got a total adjustment of negative 0.012, which is the opposite of the total error in our level loop, giving us a final adjusted elevation of 812.216. There's our strike throughs. 812216 is where we started. This loop has been adjusted. Let's talk about one other possibility that may arise. Sometimes when we're performing a level loop, we'll run our level loop out in one direction. I'm gonna go ahead and fake in some point numbers here. Let's say we ran through 201, 202, 203. 203 being the end of our level loop. So from 203, we came back through 202, 201, and then closed to the PBM. The math creating our adjustment factor would be the same. The only difference would be that after your adjustment, you would have two different elevations for any station that was run through twice. What would you do with that data? You'd simply take each adjusted elevation from 201, add them together, and divide by two. This value would be your final adjusted elevation. I'd create a third column called final adjusted. I'd use strike throughs on all of my elevations that hadn't yet been averaged and leave only the final adjusted elevation clearly marked in its column across from the point name. That's it. These are the most common types of scenarios when adjusting a level loop. So now you're well prepared and ready to get to work. Thanks for visiting Lean Survey. There are plenty more best practice, quick tricks, and tip videos on the way. Be sure to like, leave a comment if you have recommendations for content, and click that subscribe button for more.